Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn how to make giant cutout characters like this Mickey Mouse and this penguin, whom I am naming Penny. We're also gonna make a stand so your cutout character can stand on its own and just like this, right? Uh, so if you're thinking that this is too hard or you just can't wrap your heads around how to get it so big, I promise it's not as hard as you might think. Now you could cut it all out by hand, but that would take a rather long time. So I'm cutting it all out on a cutting machine using a technique known as larger than mat cutting. So I'm gonna show you exactly how that works and share my tips and tricks so that you are successful too. Are you ready? Come with me. We're gonna take Penny and Mickey to the craft table with us. <laughs> Putting together a larger than mat project like Mickey or Penny definitely takes some practice, but once you get the hang of it, you will be a pro, I promise. It's really just a big puzzle and the trick is to know how to first take it apart. I'm gonna show you how to do that using a feature in Cricut Design Space that you might not have ever used before. It's a game changer for a project like this. Now, another trick involves scotch tape. Yep, regular old scotch tape. That's how we'll hold our pieces together. But I have a really good technique I'm gonna share on how to apply the tape. It makes a really big difference in the overall look of our cutout characters. Of course, you can hang these on the wall um, or just lean them up against the wall for decoration, but I think they look even better with their own stand. So we are going to make a stand for our big cutout characters too. I've tested all types of different materials and I've come up with what I think makes the best and most stable stand. I'm gonna share that in this video. So let's take a look at the supplies and tools that we need to make these big DIY cutout characters. To start, we need lots of good quality cardstock. I'm using a mix of 80 and 100 pound cardstock, but of course you can use 65 pound cardstock, really whatever you have. Um, and that's because we're gonna reinforce our design with a backing. I'm also going to use a good quality craft glue like this and some spray adhesive and of course our scotch tape. And to reinforce our larger than matte cutout character, we'll use these big plastic sheets. You could also use foam core sheets instead, but they won't cut as neatly or look as polished when you're done. More on that a little later. Now for tools, I use my Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine to cut my designs, but any cutting machine that accepts a 12 by 12 machine mat would work, including the original Maker or any Explore machine. You'll also want the standard paper crafting tools that you see here, as well as a ruler, a craft knife, and a pencil, which will help us pull it all together. So are you ready to learn how to make these really cool designs or your own character that you want? Let's get started. Step one, find your character. First, look for a character you want to make really big. Your goal is to find a layer design that works. You can upload your own SVG cut file or find so many awesome options, ideal for large cardstock cutouts in Cricut Design Space. You'll want to start with a high quality layered vector design, like an SVG, rather than a flat pixelated design like a JPEG or PNG or another low resolution image. You will also want to look for a design with a pretty solid base and extra layers on top. For example, the Mickey Santa here in Cricut Design Space is perfect for turning into a big cutout character. If you add this to your canvas, you'll see that it has a solid base and extra layers on top to work with. Now, the Mickey Santa is super cute but it's not free and not even available to purchase in all countries. I don't want anyone to be left out in learning this technique, so we've created a giant penguin that you can make or simply practice with for free. To find it, go to jennifermaker.com 441 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching for number 441 and then click the link to download the zip file. 
The folder includes printable PDFs you can cut by hand, but it is much faster to use the SVG cut files and cut the designs on a cutting machine like a Cricut. I've included a pre-sliced penguin and stand, along with a complete penguin, not sliced, which is what I'm going to use to show you how to slice the design into mat sized pieces. You'll use this technique for any character that you want to create. There's also a full size version of the stand included in the file. To begin, upload the SVG that you'd like to use and add it to your canvas. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload files. Step two, prepare your DIY cutout character files. Here's what the larger than Matt Penguin cutout character looks like on my Design Space canvas. First, resize your character to the desired size, the size you want when it's all finished. With a lock icon at the top closed to maintain proportions, I enlarged my penguin to be about 36 inches tall. That's three feet tall. I'm going to zoom out so I can see everything within the window. To do this, click on the plus or minus sign on the bottom left of the canvas to zoom in or out. Next, ungroup all of the layers by selecting the character and clicking ungroup right here. And then click anywhere on the canvas outside of the bounding box. This next step is the key to cutting a larger than matte image like this. You want to break apart the images that are too large into matte sized pieces. Here's how. I'll move the smaller layers out of the way to see all of the layers I'm working with in order to determine what will need to be sliced. You can see that some of these layers are already small enough to fit on a 12 by 12 inch mat, so we don't have to slice them. So we move these off to the side, starting with the eyes, cheeks, nose, and so on. I'm also going to move the Santa hat and the iceberg out of the way for now. We'll also slice those pieces, but let's come back to that in a bit after we get the hang of it. Let's group all of those bits together and then hide them for now so we can concentrate on slicing the body layers. Let's drag those apart so we can see everything. Once you have all of your layers separated, you'll notice some strange cutouts on his body layers. Don't panic. These cutouts are placement guides and are going to help us remember where all the little bits go and align the layers when it's time to piece them all back together. Now I need to cut the layers that are too big down into mat sized pieces. I'll start with the base layer. To do this, click on Shapes over on the left and select a square from the Free section to add it to your canvas. With the lock icon closed so we don't change the proportions, adjust the square to the size of your mat's maximum cutting area. For example, I'm using a 12 by 12 inch machine mat, so the maximum cutting area is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So that is what I will size my square to be. Next, duplicate the shape until you have enough of these correctly sized squares to roughly cover your image. I needed five squares. And here's a tip, if you're having trouble seeing if you're covering everything under the squares, change the operation type to pen while laying things out. Just don't forget to switch it back to basic cut before slicing. I'm also going to be mindful of where I place the squares so that my slice lines are least visible and don't create any oddly sized bits. To avoid overlaps or gaps during assembly, here's another tip for you. We can use the X and Y position fields in the top menu to exactly align the squares. X indicates the spot on the canvas horizontally, while Y is the vertical position. Make sure your grid lines are visible on the canvas. If they aren't, click on the top left corner of the Design Space canvas until you see them. Your X and Y numbers might not match exactly to mine because your teal layer might be in a different position on your canvas. And that's okay. You just want to make sure you line up the left bottom corner of the bounding box of that layer at the inch or half inch mark. That's how we can make sure the alignment of the squares is just right. 
Since the grid squares are in half inch increments, I can easily start at the bottom left and round up to the nearest inch or half inch in both the X and the Y fields at the top. Now I'll place the rest of my squares based on the placement of the first. The next square will go above the last. I'll eyeball it on the canvas and then adjust the numbers in the X and Y fields at the top, rounding to the closest inch or half inch, and so on and so forth, until all of my squares are covering the penguin. A bit of his head at the top is left uncovered, and that's just fine. It's smaller than my square, so I'll just leave it as the last piece after slicing everything else. You can always change to pen under operation to see what's underneath. You can always zoom in closer to check the alignment. Just always make sure to change back to basic cut. Since I know these squares don't have gaps or overlaps, I'll make a copy to use on the other pieces by holding down my shift key on my keyboard to select them all in the layers panel and then click duplicate. I'm also going to group them for now so I can hide them and keep working on the teal layer. Now it's time to slice. One at a time, hold down the shift key to select one square and the teal layer in the layers panel. Then click slice below the layers panel, just like this. You'll get three new layers. You'll want to delete the two extra slice bits. Mine are gray because that's the color of the square. Repeat with the next square until all parts of the body are sliced with the squares. You should be left with the teal penguin base layer sliced into his mat size pieces. Mine is sliced into six pieces, including that little piece of its head. Remember, if you ever make a mistake, you can always click the undo button at the top to go back to the previous step. Now we'll move to the white layer so I can group my teal layers and hide it for now. I will also find my duplicate squares and click on the eye icon to bring them back to the canvas. I can see I will only need four squares for this layer, so I will delete one after I ungroup them. I will repeat the same process to slice this layer into four mat sized pieces. So select a square, the white layer, and then slice each piece one at a time and make sure to delete the leftover bits in the layers panel. If ever you select something and you know you think you selected the right things but slice is not available to you, it means you selected more than two layers. So go back and check and see what you've selected. Slice only works with two layers. You want your square and the base layer beneath it. Once that's finished, group and hide that layer. Then unhide the layer with all the other pieces, the one we hid earlier, and ungroup it. Then repeat the same steps to slice the larger pieces of the Santa hat and the iceberg. There are five pieces in all. Click on shapes, add a square with the lock icon closed to maintain proportions, resize it to 11 and a half inches, and duplicate it until you have enough to cover each part. It looks like we'll need two squares for each piece. I'll start with the red layer, add and align the squares over the top. Before I slice, I will duplicate the squares so I can use them for the next piece and so on. Once you start getting the hang of it, you can slice first, then delete the extra bits all at once. It's completely up to you. Once everything is sliced, add it all back to the canvas to make sure everything is all set. And you are now ready to cut the design. Be sure to save your work right now. Step three, cut out your character pieces. Make sure you select the right machine and click make it in the top right. On the prepare screen, make sure your material sizes look correct. I'm using 12 by 12 inch for everything, and there aren't any really tiny pieces or ones that don't fit on the 12 by 12 inch mat. If there are on yours, go back to the canvas and follow the slicing steps again. Click back on the first mat and then click continue. 
On the Make screen, set your material settings according to your choices. I used a mix of cardstock, so I started with the medium cardstock setting with more pressure. To find the appropriate cardstock setting for each mat, click Browse All Materials and type cardstock in the search bar. Then select the desired result. Click Apply and adjust the pressure as necessary. Place your first mat's cardstock face up on a green standard grip 12 by 12 inch machine mat and then use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered. This really helps with getting a good clean cut. Check that your fine point blade is clean and it's in the clamp and then load the mat into your machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. If you run into any issues cutting your materials, check out my Cricut tips and tricks for cleaner cuts at jennifermaker.com slash blades. When the cut is finished, unload your mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and roll the mat back to release the cardstock. This helps prevent material from curling and ripping. If the smaller bits do not release from the mat, use a spatula to carefully lift them off the mat, just like this. Repeat the process with the rest of the mats. Stack your similar pieces and colors together as they come off the mat so everything stays in the correct orientation. Step 4. Piece your design cutouts back together. Once all your pieces of cardstock are cut, make sure you know how to put it all back together. It's just like a puzzle. I recommend you refer to the images on the Cricut Design Space screen you cut to make sure you know which pieces go where and in which orientation. So for the penguin, you'll need to tape together the teal layer, the white body layer, and the iceberg layer if you cut it on two pieces of paper as I did. Two at a time, turn the pieces over to work on the back. Carefully match the two pieces and join them with a piece of Scotch Magic Tape leaving about an inch of extra tape on both sides of the seam. We'll blend the seam using a smooth metal tool, like the ball tip stylus that I put in my tool list. A spoon also works if you don't have that. In effect, you'll mash the thin cut edges together until they're blended well enough to not be visible without a good magnifying glass. This is called burnishing. We also use that term when transferring vinyl to other surfaces, but in this case, we're using it a little differently. If you're working on a soft wood surface, place a self-healing mat under the seam to protect it from the pressure. If you're not familiar with burnishing paper edges, practice on taped scraps of similar cardstock before you try this on something that you cannot replace. With moderate pressure, run the tool back and forth perpendicular to the seam. Don't press so hard that the paper tears. The tape will bond more completely to the paper and you'll see the cardstock fibers expand at the cut to fill in any space. Work parallel right over the seam as well to really smoosh the two pieces together. Finally, flip the pieces over so they're face up. Carefully, with a clean, sharp craft knife, trim the excess tape so it's flush with the edge of the cardstock. Remember to use the self-healing mat. Continue the steps above for all pieces and layers. Step 5. Attach your penguin layers. With your layers put back together, you can now start attaching them to each other. Start with the bottom layer and work your way up. Place the teal body layer face up with the white body to the side face down. Use the ultra fine precision tip on a glue bottle, I'm using Barely Art glue, to apply a thin layer of glue on the back of the white cardstock without getting too close to any edges. Using the screen image for reference, place the white section on top of the body. Use your brayer to help smooth out any bumps and secure them together. Then add the white flipper pieces. Continue with the rest of the layers and pieces in the following order. Use the cutout guide marks to align the smaller bits and to help place the Santa hat in just the right spot. Assemble the iceberg in the same way, starting with the bottom white base, followed by the top white base and shadow pieces. 
To determine where the penguin should be positioned on the iceberg, use your ruler to measure about five inches up from the bottom of the ice. This is where the bottom of his feet will land. I just eyeballed his horizontal positioning so he looked about centered within the shadow oval. I also recommend referring to the image on your design space screen when positioning the pieces. Step six, add a backing and a stand. We're almost there. Now we want our cutout to stand on its own. So we'll need to add a stiffer backing because cardstock alone is not enough. It's much too floppy. I've used foam core in the past, like for my baby Yoda that I did a few years ago. But after lots of testing, I chose corrugated plastic yard sale sign sheets for this project. You could use either, of course, but the corrugated plastic looks better and works beautifully. They were also easier to find in a 36 inch sizing and were a lot less messy. Win win. Place a corrugated plastic sheet down on your work surface, then put your cardstock cutout face up on top of it. Align the cutout so the bottom edge is against the bottom edge of your backing. Now trace your character cut out on the plastic sheet with a pencil. Once the outline is clear, set the character aside. With a self-healing mat underneath, cut along the inside of the pencil line with a sharp craft knife. And please be careful, don't cut yourself. If you've sized your penguin just like I have, he will fit on one sheet of corrugated plastic. Otherwise, repeat with additional pieces of plastic sheets as necessary, then use tape to tape the plastic sheets together. Now it's time to attach it. In a well-ventilated and protected area or with a big cardboard box to catch overspray, add a light coat of spray adhesive to the character's back. Then place it face up on the plastic backing. The cardstock will extend beyond the plastic just a bit to keep it from being visible. I recommend the spray adhesive because you can reposition the character a bit before it dries completely. Okay, it's time to make the stand. This step is optional, of course. Here's what the pre-sliced stand template looks like on the Cricut Design Space canvas. I zoomed out a bit to see the whole design. The stand measures around 21 inches tall, which is perfect for the 36 inch cutout. If you're making a cutout that requires a different size stand, you can resize it to your desired measurements. Just make sure you keep the design grouped and the lock icon closed above the size field in the top menu to maintain the proportions. You will notice small notches on the top, bottom, and center of the stand. We'll use these later to mark our fold lines to score by hand when we set up the stand. Now we're ready to cut. Click Make It and Continue. I used white 12 inch by 12 inch 100 pound cardstock with the heavy cardstock material setting and default pressure. You can use whatever you have though. Once the cut is finished, remove the pieces from the mats as normal and make sure they're all oriented correctly before taping them together. You do not need to burnish the seams, it should look like mine. Now trace your cardstock stand templates border onto a sheet of the corrugated plastic yard signs. Make a note of the notches. We'll need to use those to mark our score lines. With the template still in position, fold the inner flap down on the horizontal score line and trace the inside of the shape on the plastic. Now mark the tops and bottoms of the vertical score line notches and remove the template. Using a ruler aligned with the top and bottom score line marks on the left, draw a vertical line stopping at the point of the V shape and then continuing down to the bottom. Repeat on the other side. Using a craft knife, cut out the outer shape of the stand and the inner flap shape, making sure not to cut where your score lines will be.
With your ruler and your burnishing tool or Cricut scoring stylus, make your score lines. Dent the plastic, but try not to cut through. Carefully pop out the inner cut shape, then fold up along your horizontal and vertical score lines. Fold the arms of the stand back toward you, making sure the inner flap stays flat, and then flatten them back out. Next, fold the inner flap on the horizontal score line toward you, while also folding the arms back toward you. Fold the inner flap down into the notches and into place. Align the bottom of the stand with the bottom of the back of your cutout. Use spray adhesive or your craft glue to glue the flat side of your stand to the back of the mounted cutout. Wait about five to 10 minutes for the glue to dry and then stand up your cutout and see him come to life. Now that you have all the steps and tips to create a DIY cutout and stand, you can apply the same technique to essentially anything. For example, you can make a giant cutout of Mickey Mouse. I already pre-sliced the Santa Mickey in Design Space, so all you need to do is click Make It. If you'd like to see the original image, go to the search window on the Design Space home and type in this project number. Number M150F3BD. But it's easier to just open up my pre-prepared and sliced design. It's at jennifermaker.com slash santa-mickey. Please note that Santa Mickey in matte size pieces is not a free file. At the time of this tutorial, there is a fee of $1.99 to use the licensed image. Also note that the original Mickey design is not identical to this Mickey. I have omitted some of the background layers that were not necessary for the application of this design. Also, due to licensing restrictions, Mickey Mouse is unfortunately not available outside of the United States. This is all a lot of qualifications, and it's the main reason you don't see me using images from Cricut Design Spaces Library. But I am sharing my version anyway because I thought some of you might like to use it and this is the only proper and legal way that I can show you how to use a licensed character like this. To cut, assemble, and mount Santa Mickey, follow the steps that we did for the giant penguin. All the materials I used for this cutout are included on my blog. Once your Santa Mickey's layers are all attached, trace him onto a sheet of the corrugated plastic. Note that his width is slightly larger than the plastic sheet, so his tail will hang off a bit. Trace the necessary piece onto extra plastic, then use scotch tape to tape the plastic sheet pieces together. Use your cardstock stand template to trace, cut, and score a stand out of a plastic sheet. But before attaching the stand, I want to make a couple of extra modifications. Mickey has a gap between his legs and a small gap between his feet, but I don't want to see the stand there. So I'm going to align the stand with Mickey exactly where I want him to be, then trace the gaps onto the back stand and cut them out. This is completely personal preference and an optional step, but I think it's a nice finishing touch, don't you think? Now I'll use the spray adhesive to attach the stand to the back of my Mickey cutout, and he is done. Didn't these turn out great? Now that you know the technique, I can't wait to see all of the cool larger than map projects that you come up with. There are basically the sky's the limit and you can make whatever you want and as big as you want. Now as for displaying your giant cutout characters, that's up to you. However, since they're cardstock, they're safest indoors except on the driest of days. If you wanted something that will hold up outside, permanent vinyl on a wood base would work the best. But the larger than matte slicing technique that I taught you would be the same. Now, if you have any questions about how to cut projects bigger than your mat with a cutting machine that I didn't answer here or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, just let me know. Leave your question below this video 
or better yet, ask over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to help and I would love to see your big cutout characters. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.